In the 1950s, there are four individuals involved in uncovering and discovering what the structure of DNA molecules was. And these four individuals include Maurice Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin, James Watson, and Francis Crick. Now, what these four individuals essentially did is they were able to develop and study X-ray diffraction patterns of DNA fibers. And from these X-ray diffraction photographs, they were able to deduce the following four points about DNA molecules. Point A. If we examine any DNA molecule, the DNA molecule consists of two individual strands of nucleic acid. So we have two polynucleotide chains in a single DNA molecules. And these two chains essentially run in an anti-parallel fashion and they wind around a common axis. And this can be described by the following diagram. So this is one strand, this is the five end of the strand, and this is the three end of the strand, and it runs along our common axis in the following direction, from the top to the bottom. The second polynucleotide chain is this chain here, and it runs in the opposite direction, so it essentially winds around the common axis, and it runs from the bottom to the top, so we have the five end here, and the three end here for the first chain, and the three end here and the five end here for that second chain. And so in this particular case, let's imagine that the axis of rotation basically lies along our y axis and these two strands essentially curl around, they coil around our common axis. This is point number one. So a single DNA molecule consists of two individual nucleic acid chains that wind about a common axis and these two polynucleotide chains run in opposite directions. So although they are parallel, they run in opposite directions. B. The backbone of, so if we examine the following diagram, these are the backbones and these are the nitrogenous bases. And remember, in our study on the backbone, we said that a backbone consists of these repeating units of sugar phosphate groups. So we have sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, and that runs along the entire backbone. And in the diagram, these arrows are basically our backbone. Now, what they were able to show is that the backbone is found on the outside portion, on the exterior portion of that DNA molecule. And that's because these phosphate groups found on the backbone contain negative charges and they are stabilized by the aqueous environment that contains polar water molecules. And we'll examine that in much more detail in the next several lectures. Now, if the backbone is found on the, uh, on the exterior, then the interior, the inside of that double helix, essentially contains the nitrogenous bases. So, if we examine on the inside portion of our molecule, we have these nitrogenous bases, which are relatively nonpolar. While on the outside, we have the actual strand, we have the backbone that contains the sugar and phosphate groups, and these are found on the outside. Point number three, these bases are essentially perpendicular with respect to the common axis. So once again, if this is the common axis, then these bases are essentially like so. So if this is the common axis, the, base, uh, the, the bases are at a 90 degree angle with respect to this common axis. And this allows for the stacking of the bases on top of one another. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. Now, if we examine any one of these base pairs, so let's say this base pair and this base pair, the distance between any two base pairs is given to be 3.4 angstroms, or equivalently, 0.3 nanometers. Now, what they were a uh, also able to show is that in a single turn of a DNA molecule, there is a distance of 34 angstroms. And if we divide this quantity into this, we get a value of 10. 
So 34 angstroms divided by 3.4 angstroms gives us 10. And what that means is there are 10 bases in every single turn of that DNA molecule. So what do we mean by turn? Well, let's begin with on this point on our DNA molecule on this strand. And when the strand basically makes a 360 degree turn, that is what we mean by single turn. And in that 360 degree turn, there are 10 bases. And that means every time we go from one base to another, there's an angle change in 36 degrees because 36 divided by 10 gives us 36 degrees. So every single time we go from, let's say, this base pair down to this base pair, the DNA turns by 36 degrees. And, we, and when we go down 10 of these base pairs, our degree measure is 36 times 10 or 360 degrees. Now, the final observation they were able to deduce following these x-ray diffraction patterns is the fact that the entire diameter of this DNA molecule is 20 angstroms. Now, what about the base pair? So how exactly do these base pairs actually stack within the interior portion of our DNA molecule? Well, they were able to basically show that one purine always bonds to a single pyridine and the other purine always binds to the other pyridine in DNA molecules. They were able to show that our guanine bonds with cytosine and adenine binds with thymine and these are the interactions interactions that basically exist between our bases. So we have guanine forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine. This is one, two, three. And adenine forms only two of these hydrogen bonds. And what that basically means is if our DNA molecule contains a higher amount of guanine cytosine bases compared to adenine thymine, that means our DNA molecule will be more stable because this base pair contains three H bonds, but this base pair only contains two H bonds. Now, the final thing that I'd like to briefly talk about is what actually holds and stabilizes that double helix structure. Well, number one are these hydrogen bonds that exist between our base pair. So this is base pair number one, base pair number two, base pair number three, and so forth. The red molecules are the guanine, the blue molecules are the cytosine, the green molecules are the adenine, and the orange molecules are the thymine. And because they essentially are located uh, adjacent with respect to one another, we have these hydrogen bonds shown in purple. Now, because we have a distance of 3.4 angstroms between any base pair, and because this distance corresponds to van der Waal forces, that means we have a bunch of London dispersion interaction taking place between our bases. So these bases are basically stacked on top of one another, and because this distance of 3.4 angstroms is the perfect distance for a London dispersion forces, that means we also have these van der Waal forces holding our bases together and contributing to the overall structure of the DNA molecule. And finally, we also have the hydrophobic effect and the hydrophobic interaction. So remember, inside the nucleus of our cells, we have an aqueous environment that consists of the water molecule. And because water is polar, what that means is this DNA molecule exists in a polar environment. And that's exactly why the backbone, which contains the polar phosphate groups, essentially lie on the outside. And these relatively nonpolar bases essentially cluster on the inside. And because of this hydrophobic effect, these bases are able to cluster very well on the inside and they create this stacking effect and that leads to these van der Waal forces and these hydrogen bonds. So this is the double helix structure of the DNA molecule that we also call the Watson-Crick model of DNA.